Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you could use Luminar to process a cityscape so you could have an image that looks like this and end up with an image that looks like this. We're going to be working on this image. This image presents some problems. It's really a high dynamic range scene. There's some very bright areas and some very dark areas. Also, there's a lot of distortion in the buildings that we have to take care of. Um, you're going to find it's very easy to do in Luminar. Now, I'm doing this in Luminar 3, and what I'm going to be showing you and the filters I'll be using will be also available in Luminar Flex and Luminar 2018, if you're still using Luminar 2018. So, um, right away, I'm going to jump right into it. And the first filter I like to do is the raw develop filter. That's really the filter you should use first. If you're not using a raw file like I am, then it would be the develop filter. And by the way, I, this is a raw file. Um, if you're interested in the gear I use, the settings I had for that gear, and the exposure information, all that will be listed in the description below the video. So I'm going to go right away to add filter and I'm going to go to raw develop. So I'll add the develop filter and typically what I'll do is I'll look at the image and see what does it need most. I won't necessarily start right at the top with profile or white balance. I'll go right in and look at the image. Well, what does this image need? Well, the sky is really bright and the buildings are really dark. So I'm going to go right to highlights and I'll rein in that sky a little bit. I'm going to pull that down. Then I'm going to go to shadows and I'm going to open up the shadows to make the buildings a little brighter. So right away. Now at this point, if I wasn't happy with the white balance, I'd come in and do something there. Or if I wanted to try a different profile, I would. But I th I'm really happy with the Luminar default profile. And I think the white balance is perfect. So I'm really not going to do anything there. I'm just going to get a white and black point. Now again, I'm not sure. I'm working on it with a Mac. I'm not sure if this little trick I'm going to show you is available yet on the Windows version of Luminar, but that is to get a white point, I'll hold the Option key on my Mac. If it's a PC, it's the Alt key. And again, I'm not sure it works. And when I click on the white uh, slider, the screen will turn black. And I'll just keep turning that up until I get some color coming through. And you can see right in here, I was getting some color come through. Just a little bit. And that means I'm starting to clip those channels, the blue channel and the green channel, it looks like. Um, so if you get red, you're clipping the red channel. And if you get white, you're clipping all three channels. So I'll just back that off a touch to kind of minimize that. And that's a decent white point. I like that. Next, I'll go to the blacks slider. Again, I'll hold the option key in. It's PC, if you have a Mac, I'll turn this one down until I get some color coming through. And you can see I'm clipping blue, clipping green. And when I go all the way down, I'm clipping quite a bit. So you can see how much darker that is. Now, typically I like to clip a little bit, but I think on this image, because there's such a large dynamic range difference, I don't really want to clip at all. Because I like to clip the shadows a little bit because often I feel it gives me a little more tonal depth in my image. But in this case, since there is so much dynamic range, it really doesn't need me to... Um, process it in such a way that I'm exemplifying the tonal depth. It's already there. I don't have to do anything to make it anything more so than what's already there. Now, I've mentioned several times, I don't often move the clarity slider and I don't often uh, move the contrast slider in the raw develop or develop filters because there's so many great filters in Luminar that allow you to more precisely add clarity or something that's like clarity or add something like contrast to your image uh, in a more precise way. So I prefer to do it later. So what we will do is go to the lens and we have all three checked. So they're, they're all ready to go there. We'll go to the transform tool. The um, image does have some issues. You can see there's some distortion. The building on the right, this tall building, is tilted in towards the middle. Building on the left is also tilted in a little bit, and all the buildings are kind of laying back a little bit. So we need to fix that. So we're going to go to the vertical slider, and I'm just going to click on that. And you can see as soon as I hover over it, we get the tight grid. And the tight grid will really help us 
better align those verticals so they're straight up and down, especially on this building here. And that's the building I'll be looking at. So I'm just going to click on that, move it to the left. And you can see how it's straightening out everything. And I'll just kind of fine tune it a little bit so it's as good as I could make it. And right there, it looks pretty much straight up and down. And that looks pretty good. The buildings are now going straight up and down and they're not falling backwards or tilted in. But we do have some blank pixels on the bottom and a little bit on the sides. So we need to crop those out. So go up to the tools, go to the crop tool. Now, as far as the tool attributes, I want to keep the original aspect ratio, two to three aspect ratio. So I'm going to leave this padlock locked. And I'm just going to go down here at the bottom, this handle right in the middle, and I'm going to just push up. I'm just going to push up just enough so that we're eliminating the blank pixels. And that looks pretty good right there. And as a, better, as a matter of fact, with this crop, it's actually a better composition. I have the majority of the buildings on the lower third, so that is a better composition. So we're going to click Done. And there's our crop. And I think for now, we're okay with the raw develop uh, filter. I may come back in and readjust things a little bit. We'll see. But right now, I think that looks good. Now, what we need to do is get rid of noise. I mentioned several times that you should uh, get rid of noise very early in your workflow because the more filters you add, uh, often you'll uh, exaggerate the noise and it will be more difficult to remove the noise later in your workflow. So uh, let's get rid of noise now. There's just a tiny bit of noise in the sky. I really don't see it anywhere else. So I'm going to go to Add Filter, and I'm going to go to Denoise. I'll close down the Filters catalog. And I don't have to move this a lot. For example, I think if I move it even to 30-ish, it removed the noise for sure. But what you have to be careful is when it's removing noise, it's softening the image. And if you look, let's say, right here at the brick pattern on this building, Right now, you don't really see the brick pattern, but if I go to the noise filter and turn it off, you can see the brick pattern pop out. I'm going to turn it back on and turn it back off. You can see the brick pattern, and we're kind of obliterating it. And I don't want to do that, so I want to bring it down so that we're getting rid of the noise, but we're minimizing the, uh, the blurriness we add everywhere else, if that made any sense. So at 15, I don't see any noise. I don't see any color noise at all, so I don't think I need to move that color noise filter or, or color slider, I'm sorry, at all. I'm going to try 10. There's just a tiny bit of noise at 10, so let's just go like to 12 or 13. And that's good. I don't see any noise at all in the sky. I doubt you could even see it in the video when it was there because the video isn't as resolute as my screen as I look at this and I just barely see it. Um, but the building, you can see it's still softened. It. There's before it, we added denoise, and there's with denoise. It's, it's better, but it's not like, you know, perfect, but it's good. I like that. So again, do denoise right after you do either raw develop or develop, depending on your image. So we're going to go to add filter now. And um, there's a lot of different things I want to do uh, to the image. I want to add some sharpness or detail to it. I also want to add some contrast to it. You notice, again, I didn't add contrast with the slider up here. I prefer using advanced contrast. With advanced contrast, I have better control of where I'm applying the contrast. I really don't need contrast on the buildings. But the sky, you could argue I probably don't need contrast there either. But I could make it very dramatic. I'm going to take the highlights and see what that looks like when I move that up. You can see it's adding contrast, but to tell you the honest God truth, as I do it, I don't necessarily like what it's doing. Yeah, see, it's I don't really like that. It's it's not doing uh, the contrast the way I think I like it, and I don't like midtones either. So you know what? I'm not even going to use advanced contrast. Uh, so the sky was dramatic as on its own. I don't really need to add any contrast to it. Uh, so we'll go to add filter. And what I want to do is to go down to the HSL filter. This is U saturation and luminance. And I want to do some things here. You can see how the grass down here, it's just kind of like, you know, very evenly toned. Well, I'm going to change that a bit here. I'm going to go to the saturation tab of the HSL uh, 
uh, filter and I'm going to go to yellow and I'm going to turn yellow saturation up. Then I'm going to go to the luminance tab and I'm going to bring luminance up. So I'm making the yellows brighter and you can see when I do that how it's making parts of the grass brighter. But it's leaving the mainly the green part a little darker. And I'll go to green and to even make that a little more dramatic I'll turn green down and I'll bring yellow up again a little more. So we have a little more tonal variance in the grass. And that's really what it looked like when I was there. Um, you know, there's, if you ever look at anyone's lawn, there's going to be yellow patches and darker green patches most often. And that's what I saw that day. And that's what we have now. So I like that. What I'll often do with this uh, HSL filter too, is I'll go to the luminance section and bring blue down. But the sky is blue enough. I think it would look fake if I mess with it. So I think it looks pretty good right there. So I'm ready to add another filter. I think we'll go right to detail. And uh, let's see, what did I have? Yeah, detail enhancer. And we'll go right there. And I want to add detail mainly to the buildings. And the buildings will be medium. So I'm going to go to medium and kind of just see how I pull that up. And we're just really defining those buildings. Now, if we go too high, it starts looking like pseudo HDR. And we don't want that. So we just want to just define the buildings a little better. And I think right there is pretty good. There's before and there's after. I might even get away with turning that up. We'll see what small does, if it affects anything. Now, small, I think, is having too much of a dramatic effect on the buildings. So we're not going to do anything with small. And large. Large is a little more subtle on the buildings, but maybe just a tiny bit. Now, I don't think we need to do protection or masking. We don't have to protect the highlights or mask it away from any of uh, the shadows in the image. I think it looks good right there. So we're good with Detail Enhancer. Now, I'd like to add the Golden Hour filter. That is uh, one of my favorite filters, and I often add it to landscapes and cityscape shots. So we'll add that. And... Uh, this, I ju it just adds a nice kind of warm touch to the image. Now, I don't want to go too high, you know, make it look kind of fake. I just a little bit, like, you know, the sun was setting or the sun was rising behind me. Just a little bit. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe even a little less. This uh, filter often works good if you have grass and buildings in the shot like we have here. It does a nice job. So very subtle. I didn't want it to really... Um, you know, look like it was just like I was decoloring the clouds or anything. Uh, there's before and there's after. Before, after. So just a little bit. Maybe you can tweak it on a tiny bit more. So I'm really pretty much done. I'm going to finish off with a vignette. Um, somebody commented to me, sent me an email. They said they don't like vignette. It looks like a, uh, a cheap uh, lens. And, of course, they're right in a way. I mean, because a lot of cheap lenses, you'll vignette with the cheap lens. But what a vignette does when you do it in post-production, it helps uh, pull the viewer's attention more towards the middle of the image. You don't, especially an image like this, where you have very bright areas on the outer edges. Most often, a human's eyes will go to the brightest part of the image first. And they'll tend to stay there. They won't want to look anywhere else. So if you put a subtle vignette on there, just make it a little darker. It helps push their eyes more towards the middle of the image. And that's why I like to do it. And that's why I most often like to use a darker vignette. So I'll put in a darker vignette like this. And I don't want it so it's kind of obvious. I just want it very subtle. And I think the default size, roundness, and feather are okay. Um, I'll turn up inner light a little bit. I did have the building slightly dark on purpose, kind of knowing that I was going to be doing the vignette and making it a little brighter toward the middle. Now, I could place the center more towards the building, but I like it here, right where it is, uh, with the center right here. Why? Well, I'm making the lot of the water darker, and this is the most pouring part of the image, right? And I often teach uh, my students when you're composing a scene in camera, look at what is the most interesting part of the scene and look at what is the most um, non-interesting part of the scene. And you want to maximize the interesting and minimize the non-interesting. And in this case, this is why I pointed my camera up 
to minimize the water, which was boring, and maximize the sky and the city, which were interesting. And in doing that, that introduced that d distortion. But because we were using Luminar, I was able to fix the distortion and crop away more of that uninteresting part. And with the vignette, making it darker down here, more so than you know the middle part of the image, it helps, again, uh, diminish that non-interesting part. So I think that worked out well. And this is done. So there's before. And there's after. There's before and there's after. So you can see we have a dramatic difference uh, in our processing using Luminar. Very, very easy to do. And you can see I fixed that distortion in seconds. I was able to uh, really show off the interesting parts of the scene and diminish the non interesting parts of the scene very easily in post production using Luminar. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.